Hey everybody, this is Bill, and welcome back to Lesson 7 for Task Warrior. This time we're going to talk about reports and how to get information out of Task Warrior. We're already kind of doing that with Task List, but uh, we can modify the reports a little bit, so we're going to jump into that right now. All right, so let's do a quick task list to start it off. And you can see it's kind of fluorescent, kind of hard to read. So one of the things we can do is we can configure Task Warrior's uh, colors, default colors, to a wide variety of different things. So what we're going to do is we're going to nano the dot task RC. And we have some color schemes here. Uh, we just uncomment one of them to use them. And we'll save it. You could do a quick TL and you can kind of see this one's probably no better. The bright pink and bright blue. So up arrow. Let's go back down. I like the darker theme. So I kind of go for a little bit more high contrast kind of look. The dark 256. Save. TL. There you go. That's a lot better. More easier on the eyes. If we look at uh, task, the reports in Task Warrior, Task Report gives us a printout of all the reports and then a basic description. So there's at the task, all tasks. Uh, in earlier earlier lessons, we looked at burn down uh, tasks, G history tasks, lists is a task, uh, is a report li task list that we have. That's a that's a default report. Task information. Information is a kind of a general report. When Task Warrior doesn't know what else to output, it just kind of goes. It's you just puts information and runs with that. Um, there's also uh, the task recurring and uh, waiting down there. The hidden task is also available. So just real quickly, if I do task all, you can see all the tasks that are available or currently in Task Warrior at the moment. If I do a task waiting, you can see there are no matches. That's because uh, I allowed too much time to expire from when I entered these uh, tasks into the system. And then when I created the, created this lesson here, too much time has expired in between. So all those waiting tasks, I think it was Michael's uh, uh, bake cake for Michael was a waiting task in the last lesson. And now it's a pending task. It's in the pending status because its date has now come due. So let's create a new task. First thing I'm going to do is do a task calendar. That's going to just print out a calendar to the screen. And so I can look at some dates here when I want my next task to be. So create a new cake task. Let's make this for uh, Tommy. And then let's give it a date of uh, August uh, 26. So let's do 2017 08 26. And this is a wedding. So we create a new project and some new tasks that are in kind of the pending state or in the waiting state. Now, if I do a task all, you can see all the tasks that are in Task Warrior. If I do a task wait, you can see the wedding cake for Tommy. Bake cake for Tommy is the uh, uh, one in waiting status. Let's look at our task reports again. So if I do a task active, I have no active tasks. So let's make a few tasks active. I'm going to go task or do a TL. So let's make one of these tasks active. So I'm going to do task. I'm going to choose 18 and then say start. And so task 18 has started. So if I do task active, you can see there is task 18. It's in orange. And if I do a task list, it's the one at the top has a high urgency score. And uh, it's the one that I should be working on at the moment. So if I do a task list again, so remember task list is report. So if I do show task list, oh, got it backwards. If I do task show list, you can see all the default values for this particular report. You can see there's a filters, there's a description, there's labels. So let's modify task list. If I do task show list, here is my default variable for that particular task report. Then do task config. Then we're going to do report.list. Then the, re the labels of that uh, report. Then what I usually do is put the beginning and ending tick mark there. Then I'm going to copy the labels just directly out of the default values. Say copy. 
And I'm going to paste them in between the two tick marks. And now I can modify them as I see fit. I put dependency, put priority, put recurring, just recur, schedule, sketch. Then way at the end, urgency, we'll hit enter. And then task warrior asks us if we want to confirm it and say yes. It says that the dot task RC has been modified. First, let's scroll up to see what the report used to look like. Remember, it had D and Sketch and Urge. So now if we do a TL for task list, you can see it's more uh, written out just as we had configured it. If we uh, nanode our dot task RC, we go edit it. We can see exactly what task warrior updated the config file with. Just simply what we fed in the command line report.list.labels with the uh, settings that we gave it. Task Warrior does a neat thing where it saves the default values. If you do a task show list, you can see the default value that it used to be and then what you customized it uh, to be. So the changes are there in the highlighted color. So that's really convenient. If you want to put the values back, well then you can just back out those changes or you can just simply edit the dot task RC file and remove that line or just comment out that line from the configuration file. All right. I hope you found that lesson useful. We are going to, in the next lesson, talk about user defined attributes or UDAs, uh, user defined attributes. When you combine them with reports, it gets really powerful, almost like the command stacking. You can start to do a lot of things when you, uh, include your own information. So, uh, until then, remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll be talking to you soon.